Hi, I'm Scott, and this is Synth Stuff. Today we're going to talk a little bit about MIDI clocks and syncing your DAW to your synthesizers. Coming up next. You've probably heard about MIDI clocks. Now, what MIDI clock is not is a signal on your MIDI connection saying, hey, the BPM is 120. And so the, you know, the, the keyboard plays at 120 BPM. That's not how it works at all. The MIDI clock is just a periodic pulse that gets sent out over your MIDI connection. The, the master, or in this case, my digital audio workstation, DAW, sends out a MIDI clock to the synthesizers, which have to obey. The MIDI clock is sent out at 24 ticks per quarter note. So if we divide that down, say we divide that by 24, now we can tell this is how long a quarter note should be. And so that's what modern synthesizers do. They take the time and measure between the pulses and then try to guess at what the BPM should be. And that's what it shows up on the tempo and that's what it slaves to. In the old days, synthesizers actually synchronized their guts to the MIDI clock. So the sequencer and everything, it didn't know what the tempo was, nor did it care. It just synced exactly to that clock. So whatever the clock was doing is what the synthesizer did. Now, some synthesizers like this Roland System 8, actually most Rolands, the uh, Roland JDXi, have a mode in which you can do that. For instance, this one here, if I turn off my MIDI clock and I try to start the sequencer, nothing happens. It's dead because there's no MIDI clock going to, to it telling it to, hey, here's the, the tempo you need to be playing at. If I turn the MIDI clock back on, it starts playing and it's playing at the speed being sent to it by my DAW. Now modern synthesizers have their own tempo because they have to be able to operate when they're not connected to a DAW or a source of a MIDI clock. Modern synthesizers like the Modi X here have a very complex arpeggiator system. Uh, they can do all kinds of things based on tempo. So it has to have an internal tempo source. Most synthesizers at least most modern synthesizers have an automatic setting so that they will use their own MIDI clock generated by their own tempo setting if there's no external MIDI clock detected. And as soon as it detects an external MIDI clock, it'll switch over and use that external MIDI clock. That's where problems come in because some synthesizers take a second or two to figure out, you know, they have to measure the speed between the clock pulses and try to figure out what the tempo is. And then instead of just syncing blindly to that clock, they figure out what the tempo is and adjust the tempo and that's what runs the synthesizer. There are two, rather three in particular, I can think of that have a problem with this. The Summit, the Modi X, and to a point, the Hydrosynth. Now the wave state does it as well, but the wave state, the, the algorithm they use to calculate the clock is really, really good. So it's really tight. Um, probably the, out of the three of them, the worst is the Summit. It, it really does not synchronize well. So let's give it a listen. On the Summit, I've set up a little rhythmic arpeggio. And then on my DAW, I've just set up a soft synth that, that plays a little drum kit. Now, ideally, when I start this and I start sending notes to the Summit, it should start playing in time with the drums that you hear in the DAW. So the arpeggiator on the summit should be in time with the drums in the DAW. Let's see what happens. They're clearly not. Let's give it a try just to see again. That's terrible. So what's the problem is that we're, start, we're sending a, a note to the summit saying, hey, start playing this arpeggio, but it doesn't know what the tempo is. So it first has to listen for a little bit and say, oh, geez, what is the tempo? Oh, got it, it's 120. Okay, switch to 120, but by then we're already a bar into it. And so it's totally and hopelessly out of time. So how we can get around that is just by starting it a bar early. So if you're doing recording your DAW and you're getting this problem and it's not syncing up properly, just when you start recording, just record a bar early before the instrument comes in and it will actually use that bar of silence to sync up. So it's, it, yes, it's silent, but it is sending a MIDI clock. So it syncs up the MIDI clock and then when it sends the note, it's ready to go, the tempo set. So I set it back a bar. Now let's listen to see how the difference is. Now you notice the ARP is perfectly in time with the drums. 
Now you notice the Hydrosynth also has trouble with this. It takes a little bit of adjustment. And even when it is watching the clock and seeing that 120 BPM I'm sending it, it's not quite perfect because it's guessing. It's guessing just based on the timing it sees. And sometimes the timing is just a little bit off. And so it, it kind of jumps up and down. For the most part, it stays in time, but it, eventually you, over a long time, if you're recording a long uh, part in MIDI, you can get a little bit of a timing error because of it. If we listen to the, the Hydrosynth, you can see again that ARP is out of time with the drums. Let me try it one more time. A little bit better that time. So now let's start it a bar back. Much better. Now you can see it's in time again. So I did mention the wave state does better than the uh, Summit and the Hydrosynth. And it does. It's pretty close. It's not perfect. So let's start it uh, like I did with the other two. It's a little bit out. But if we start it back a bar before and give it time to sync up, it's dead on. Now the JDXI, I mentioned, in order to get the sequencer to sync up, you actually have to put it in a mode where it slaves itself completely to the clock. And it only plays the sequencer when that clock starts and it sees a start signal. So if we bring this up, you'll, you're gonna hear something interesting. Now remember the JDXI and the System 8 sync themselves to the clock entirely. The sequencer is actually running exactly off the clock. It, it's not using its internal time at all. And because of that, it's gonna be dead on right from the start. As you can see, the sequencer and the internal drum track that I've got are dead on. Now, the last one I wanna talk about is the Modi X. The Modi X is a little bit different because it has very complex arpeggiators that can actually be phrases of songs and it doesn't necessarily know where to start in that phrase if you don't tell it. So I've got this set up with a complex sequence. Let's listen to that. It's totally lost. It doesn't know where it is. Let's start at a bar back and see what happens. Much better. Okay, so, but, but the problem is it doesn't know where in the sequence to start. Now it's totally off because it, it's somewhere in the middle of the sequence where we left off. So if you are doing this sort of thing with a Modi X and you are working with the arpeggiator, you need to make sure that your arpeggiator hold sync is turned off. You'll notice the difference. And it's dead on right from the beginning. I don't even have to start it in a bar behind. So that's it, a very simple talk about synchronizing MIDI when recording your DAW. I did this because I've seen several people ask about this problem where they're trying to record stuff. Particularly, I saw it in the Summit Forum on Facebook. People are trying to record stuff and they, they say they can't get this, the arpeggiator to sync with their DAW. And so the very simple solution to that is make sure you start a bar before, give the synthesizer just a, a bar to figure out the tempo and sync up and then it'll play right in time with your DAW. I hope this is of uh, some useful information to you. If you like what you saw, click like, subscribe. Hey, leave a comment down below if you have any other questions or ideas for videos. I'd love to hear them. Thanks for watching.